is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. This is a <laughs> sham. No, no. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome to DBL. We have a pretty hard story to start with, and I uh, just want to open up a little trigger warning here. We are talking about suicide. Ashley Judd is opening up about her mom's tragic suicide and revealed that she was the one, Ashley, who found Naomi after she ended her life. Here's what she told GMA. I went upstairs to let her know that the friend was there, and I discovered her. And so because we don't want it to be a part of the gossip economy, I will share with you that she used a weapon. mother used a firearm. When we're talking about mental illness, it's very important to, and to be clear and to make the distinction between our loved one and the disease. It's very real and it's an, it, is, it is enough to, it, it's a, it lies, it's savage. Let's take a moment there and just take that in. Lindsay, what did you think when you heard the news? It really hit me when she said she doesn't want to be part of the gossip. Um, you want to get ahead of your story. Sometimes you will see that people have incidents in their life and they do these interviews on Today's Show or Good Morning America and you wonder why um, she wants her own peace in her life. She's written about her own depression and so that's a big deal. And I think to share that and be so transparent is important. Something that also stuck out to me during her GMA interview, she said that she's in the footwork department and that God is in the results department. Wow. And so she's doing like the work that. in wow. order to heal herself. And I think just saying that and letting you know that she's not fully healed and mm. she's written about her depression is such an important thing to say because celebrities seem bulletproof, but they're not. Mm. Yeah, I mean, doing the work, wow. That, that's exactly what we're seeing now when we look at these young folks. You see Naomi Osaka, you know, obviously. Simone Gap, Biles. Simone Biles. Biles. Like, when they did it, people were not feeling that. But I think younger people are now seeing what the older generations are and that depression's just a thing. And I know your grandfather said, Lindsay, that's not a thing. Get up and do some push-ups and go to work. That didn't work. And what we're seeing is a lot of people, I am amazed by the generations that came in ahead of us that didn't have antidepressants, that didn't have therapy, that was looked down upon even, like you can get kicked out of the church for that. I think we're all as a, human, as a race, as a of people, realizing how important mental health is. And now we understand that it affects everybody, especially people that are super talented like she was. You cannot have that kind of genius, Kanye, you know, without having the bad as well. It's in there. It's all genius and evil genius are just one word apart. And I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic that we need to look at as human beings is how do we want to treat mental health going forward so we have less of these stories, which I hope we do. Which I hope we do too. And I really appreciate her saying separate the illness from the person make a distinction because depression doesn't discern if you're wealthy or not I'm a really outgoing person you would never I could make friends with a pet rock right <laughs> I was lost lost but it wasn't Tory it was a disease that Tory had and that's so important to realize that the decision Naomi made was in that moment where she wasn't Naomi she was Naomi with that depression in that hole. And for anyone out there who feels alone, we have some numbers we wanna give you on the screen here. And I just wanna tell you from a very personal point of view here, from a TV person looking at you through the screen, I'm telling you, you are not alone. You are not alone. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Switching gears here. Whew. Hard topic. How many of you have seen this commercial starring Matt Damon? I made fun of it. Yes, Take you look. did. Take a look. With four simple words that have been whispered by the intrepid since the time of the Romans. Fortune favors the brave. So stupid. Matt is not the only <laughs> it's so dumb. Matt is not the only celebrity promoting cryptocurrencies. My favorite, Gwyneth Paltrow, Tom Brady, uh, Reese Witherspoon, Serena Williams, and many more have also urged fans to invest their money. But here's the thing: major cryptocurrencies have seen some steep losses. Oh, that one coin really bothers me. I don't <laughs> Which, like that. Oh, really? That one, I don't like that. <laughs> the, the dog, dog? one? No, the, the one with the holes. I hate that. Oh, That's, yeah, you I don't like that. that. That's right. Well, get this: more than two hundred billion dollars in value was wiped out in a day one day so now if you don't know what cryptocurrencies are we're not entirely sure either let's be super honest it's like the cloud no one knows what that is <laughs> but 
experts say they are a digital currency that's exchanged online that's not tied to any government. But ultimately, what we really want to talk about is celebrities and what responsibility do these stars have if they're telling fans to invest and then those fans lose their money? DBL Nation, you got to get in on this. We want to know what you think. How much are you influenced by celebrity endorsements? A lot, a little, or none at all? Go to dblvote.com to weigh in. Al, what do you think about this? You know, I, I, I thought about these commercials ever since we saw the Matt Damon for the Super Bowl, and then uh, there's one with Steph Curry. And they keep saying, well, Steph Curry, you're an expert on uh, crypto. Tell us about it. He goes, no, I'm not. And he goes, no, you, you're really good with Bitcoin. Talk about it. I can't. And they built in, they baked in, Lindsay, an excuse and out for all of these celebrities. That they don't know what it they is. They said on the commercial, I don't know what I'm talking about. All <laughs> I know is you can make money doing this. And if somebody, instead of Steph Curry, if I sidled up to you at a bar and said, hey, I don't know how this happens, but you give me $100 and I'll give you 300 by the end of the day, wouldn't you be like, well, this guy's scamming? You cannot make money <laughs> with no reaper. Like, no one knows how it happens. It just comes out it's at the end. It's just magic. Yeah, it's either uh, money laundering or it's fake. And in this case, something seems off, Lindsay. What do you think about the responsibility, too, of is it Matt Damon's fault that this happened? Is this, I mean, cryptocurrency has gone up and down and up and down. And I just don't take financial advice from celebrities that have mastered their craft and art or whatever they do. Um, I have a financial planner. Even if you can't, there are people online that give TED Talks or speeches like Warren Buffett, who literally has said he would stay totally away from all these currencies and he invests in things that he likes, like seized chocolate. He saw an $8,000 return on that since 1972 because he loves chocolate. So why don't you start there with things that you actually enjoy and you buy every day, like let's say it's milk or, you know, you should invest in things that you love. Like, Al, I know you really love your suits and things. Maybe yeah. there's a small growth that would happen over 30 years naturally if other people take a liking to suits and so well, that's me, a good place to start as opposed ask, to the new trend I'm right, sorry I'm going to cut you off I'm, I'm going to ask you guys a question though, because what you said got me thinking what if it's a celebrity who's kind of main thing is uh, attaching to their audience. Like, hey, I'm That's a, what I'm a, saying. You know, what if you like, really trust that celebrity to vet because they ble they interact with their audience And you've been in interacting with them for 10 exactly. years. Exactly. Let me tell Facebook. you, I trust and love Beyonce. If Beyonce tells me to invest in something, it ain't happening. Really? Yes, I what love her What about 22-year-old Lindsay? And Lindsay, 22-year-old Lindsay made $30,000 a year. She wasn't investing okay, in anything. You, you but, weren't like 22-year-old Al. <laughs> okay. That wasn't it. We weren't investing in anything. I am not like you guys where I, I'll admit I'm much more gullible with celebrities' endorsements. And I do my own research. But when Matt Damon, all these A-listers, I'm thinking, oh, it must be vetted. That's what I really, really but, think. But then should they face a backlash for cashing a check? I mean, they're just like, hey, they, they told me to read the script. Okay, Beyonce did cover girl. Shall I say that's the best makeup in the world? If I break out from it, should I be mad at her? Like, no, it's all a choice. You can decide what works for you. I don't think we should be bashing people for doing advertisements when we've been advertising since the beginning of. All right, let's see our <laughs> ad. None at all. How much are you influenced? 91% <laughs> of you? You guys are way that's cooler than me. That's not true because we wouldn't use celebrities if that was I true. Agree. What do you think? They have you guys are research? all lying. Yes, You're all lying. It works, guys. <laughs> Coming up on DVL, we're continuing our classic commercial star. Where are they now? Is it me? Nope, you're not in one with the longest running double mint twins. Are they me? They are not, which is their favorite one to shoot. But first, the science behind a lie. We'll tell you how to spot one if someone is bending the truth. That's coming up next. Stay tuned. Closed captioning provided by Daily Blast Live is always focused, always on cue, always ready always timely this may don't miss a day dbl is all new every day check the temperature i want to take umbrage i don't think i've ever used that word audience and i used it with you i take umbrage with the fact that you guys said that celebrity endorsements don't matter i mean there's a reason that you know lebron james signs with nike oh, so like and, that, okay. and Dwayne and wade signs with adidas or whoever he's with it's because when celebrities wear things, when they eat things, when they say, this is what I did yes. to get to where I am, it works on people. It works on almost everybody. So that's because I always I know. wondered, I like, why is it so important they gave this person $500,000 out of high school or college or whatever their thing is? And it's because Got it. they're, people, for some reason, trust celebrity I do. I can't people. believe y'all said 91% of you. I it's, definitely trust But maybe, maybe we're more. not even aware. Maybe you're you not even aware. Conscious, so, I think so like when you see a commercial and you're like, wow, LeBron James eats Subway. 
It goes when, into your... When you see, when you're, you know, if it's, you're in a food court and it's between yeah. Subway, Pizza Hut, and Arby's, you're Your like, neural ah. pathways makes that decision. There, it's, it's, it's definitely a thing. I, I think mean, so, too. They never, add, the, the money that they give celebrities never gets less. I know. So it's, it's, and you always see them in everything. And to be honest, if it's like someone I like style and they do like a clothing line thing or a makeup thing, I'm in the drugstore. Okay. I'm not above going and trying that out because yeah. someone suggested it. Now, I also like influencers because I follow like makeup blogs, so I'll trust them more. But I also don't think it's Matt Damon's fault. But, but man, what a crap My mom commercial. specifically buys whatever Dre for the Slay recommends. She's buying it. So hopefully, but, you, can but, Dre's, not, but Dre's not getting paid. When he right, was doing he's this, expert. he's actually an expert in makeup. So that's the difference. Mm -hmm. like, exactly. I appreciate. Right. So I don't know, like, okay, like, person. maybe one person I would be persuaded by would be Queen Latifah. Because she's looked consistently, <laughs> she's looked consistently beautiful, and now she's represented CoverGirl, and now she's doing it again. Yeah. Like, she's so equalized. Exactly, well. so that would be the one. Okay, if there's one, that would be her. Welcome back. Al, you're looking great today. Well, thank you. <laughs> Ever wonder how you can catch a liar? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> as soon as I said thank you, I was like, uh-oh. What's the catch? Yeah. Well, <laughs> science apparently has an answer. New research suggests that one of the best ways to find out, and this is really clever, is to ask someone who you suspect is lying to perform multiple tasks while you question them. Because they say it's easy to spot the liar because the extra brain power needed to perform that secondary task makes maintaining the lie that much harder. So if, for instance, you think your partner's lying, you ask them to do the dishes while they're doing the dishes, you're like, so where were you last night? And you see how they answer while doing another task. But That's what if they stop doing the dishes and they start talking to you? Are you gonna say, no, Colin, keep doing the dishes? <laughs> That's also just like several tasks that have to work out perfectly in order for it to work out like oh begin typing now let me ask you the question <laughs> oh wash the dish you know that's like a lot of steps to that's get true. to the end goal that's there, true i mean but there is you know you guys know how i feel about old judge judy all right i'd listen to her i'd think about like she says a lot of like really knowledge, knowledgeable stuff and she says you don't have to think if you're telling the truth. Yeah. And it's a thing. I could tell if somebody goes, did you do DBL today? I could be doing 10 things. And be like, of course. But if I didn't, I'd be like, oh, well. You have to think about it. And so yeah. I do think that there, I have a different tell, and it's the look away. I've Let's talked see it. to you Let's about see it. it. The look, the, okay, where's my camera? Yeah, show the camera. Okay, now Tori asked me a question. Okay. Um, hey, Al, are you going to the movies later? Yeah. Yeah. I went. That's so uh, Come That's on the most now. It's a little I've dart. It's a little d eye dart. It's an eye dart. That was a they large dart. Well, I didn't know if the camera was on me, but you oh, get my point. Okay. I, think, I think my most irritating lie is when people act aloof, like they don't understand something. And then it's like, Give okay. Give us an example. An example, like if something's going on and people act like they have no idea that it's happening. Like, oh my God, I'm so confused. This is new news to me, breaking news. You know, you can tell that. That is annoying to me. That's my most irritating lie. What's the biggest lie you've ever been caught in? And I'll start because that's a hard question. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was to think about that. Tongue here. <laughs> I was once at a party when I was in high school, and the cops showed up, and they were like, "Who here is a diplomat's kid?" Because they can have diplomat. I'm from D.C. That happened oh to all God. our high school parties. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that is so specific. So I said I had diplomatic <laughs> immunity, and that I was from like a country, and I used an accent, and I walked away. And that was your. But what if the cops are watching now? We're that on in D.C. That sounds like the inventing, reinventing Sorry. Anna or whatever. <laughs> it was. My lie got caught in. I was speeding on the highway when I was going. to to orchestra a concert. I used to play the cello. How cute. And the police officer pulled me over and I was like telling him that I had, it was late to, mind you, I was early. I was late to the concert, da, 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 and he gave me directions instead of give me a ticket. And that was like a very nice encounter, but the lie actually worked in my favor. He was very proud of me for making it that far in orchestra. That's a half lie. I have a really quick lie. Go. I, got, uh, I got an F on some project in high school and my mom was gonna get mad. So I went to back when they were Kinko's, I went and tried to turn it into like a B or something. <laughs> but you forget that it's like, I didn't even get a color copy. So it was just <laughs> a black and white copy, but the rest of the test was in, in color. color. That's how little, I was paying attention in high school. My mom was like, you want to come on in here for a second? Like, <laughs> Albert? Yeah, it was, yeah, that was. Albert. I, I should have used the All those things kit. back in the day, forging your parents' signature Ugh. was all trash. Always. <laughs> but it never, never worked. worked out. Never yeah. worked. Let us know if you did that. Coming up on DBL, did you know there is a cor correct way to chew gum? Not with your mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> we caught up with the original Double Mint twins who told us all about it.
Last week, a draft version of a Supreme Court opinion leaked to Politico, revealing a majority of justices are prepared to overturn Roe v. Wade and allow states to write their own abortion laws. Since then, there have been a flurry of claims online about measures that might be taken in some states if that happens. One claim said a law in Tennessee has already passed that would go further than abortion and ban emergency contraception. The Post said, quote, Tennessee just banned Plan B and made it a crime punishable by a $50,000 fine to order it. So is that true? Did Tennessee ban Plan B and make ordering it a crime? The first thing to know is that Plan B is an emergency contraceptive, not an abortion pill. That means it prevents a pregnancy from happening in the first place. It doesn't end an existing one. Now, the author of the viral tweet has actually since deleted it, and she told CNN she mistakenly misinterpreted the law. What Tennessee actually just passed is a new law dealing with abortion pills, a totally different drug. And it doesn't even actually ban those pills either. It only requires that they be prescribed by a doctor in person and prohibits the pills from being provided by mail. And here's the other thing. That requirement actually already existed in Tennessee. The main thing this new law changes, it stiffens the penalty for providers who violate the law from a Class B misdemeanor to a Class E felony. That means anyone like a doctor who gives someone abortion pills through the mail or without seeing them in person could face up to a $50,000 fine in Tennessee. But the law explicitly states, quote, a criminal penalty shall not be assessed against a patient upon whom a chemical abortion is attempted or performed. So we can verify, no, Tennessee did not ban Plan B and make ordering it a crime. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Not only does the slogan get stuck in your head, but their faces are some of the most recognizable ever. Earlier, we spoke with the Double Mint Twins. Take a look, take a look. Please welcome the longest running Doublement twins, Lisa and Linda. Hi. What's up, guys? I am so geeked right now. Okay. <laughs> so, so, awesome. Yeah, well, twin work really wasn't a thing back in the 80s. So were you ladies nervous to, um, to audition for this commercial? Um, actually, I was. We were both in the business, but hadn't modeled or acted separate um, together. together. <laughs> and so it was really wonderful. But I had to go on the first audition by myself. I just had some twin pictures that we had just had taken. They were doing a nationwide search for twins. They narrowed it down to nine sets of twins. Wow. And we weren't as much nervous as we were excited yeah. about the opportunity. So we, we were surprised three weeks later when we got the call that we had booked it and then one thing led to another, one spot led to another to another and we did a total of six spots. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so you did six. I mean, it's incredible. I'm married to an identical yes. twin, so I know how crazy that oh. can be. But yes. you did six spots. <laughs> did, did you have a favorite among the six? Um, yes, we did. We loved what's called the pool spot. We were near the ocean and we were together, together. And the lighting was just beautiful. The director on that spot, the first spot, um, the pool spot, um, had been a photo fashion photographer. And so he really knew lighting and he was using the, um, sunset, the sun coming down. So it was that golden, beautiful light. And also just by happenstance, um, they were going to edit it together, but in one long wide shot, they got the hats blowing off. Off, mm -hmm. and the guys catching them in in one smooth move so that was just serendipity and that was a big part of I think the surprise of the commercial and um, the fun of, fun of it yeah yeah I got a two-part question one I just want to do you hate gum do you hate it now? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> my mom always said that we looked like cows chewing cud when we would chew gum. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. But now I like it. 
like to say, you know, it, it just proves that we can Sorry, we can we can walk and chew gum at the same time. I <laughs> love it. But there is a specific way to unwrap and chew the gum. Is oh, is that correct? Can you yeah, show us? Do you have gum with you? Sure. We had actually um, a printout sheet telling us how to load, load our gum. gum. So hopefully we can do it. After we'll give you years. the side angle. So you have to prep the gum, <laughs> slight bend, because you don't want to stick your tongue out. That no. would be very nice. Eh. And so then it has Ready? to hit the back. We're going to try this. It's been a while. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Mm. <laughs> you, you got the job. You got the job. Ladies would love to see that. Like, we got to get that out there. Um, okay, so our producer tells us that you also have a least favorite spot. A double great feeling, making you realize double is the one for you. Double fresh, double great feeling. Okay, that's beautiful. Are you in like yeah. Carmel, California? Why did you dislike that that one? Mainly because um, it was just our hair looked stiff, what we were wearing, and they kind of coached just into a more robotic synchronicity instead mm. of just kind of the natural twin yeah. thing that happened. It yeah. gave me Princess Diana vibes. Has anyone ever yeah, told yeah, you? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The golfing. We got a lot of that, which <laughs> we'll take it. It's a compliment. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For sure. What have you guys been up to since these commercials? I'm sure it's been crazy for you guys. Really just moved into a season of being a mom, and now I'm a grandmother and oh, love congrats. that. And now I've been a successful interior designer for over, wow. I don't know, 16 years. I have a passion for interior design. Oh, and I am working nice. and acting and started a little um, production company, and I'm a filmmaker as well now. Oh, <laughs> to both of you, it was so great to see you both. Honestly, I felt like I was like eight-year-old Sam all over again <laughs> watching you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today, ladies. We appreciate you. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Promotional consideration is brought to you by... has always been fleeting, but my God, it feels out of control these days. So if you belong to the millennial or the Gen Z crowd, you may have heard of the term fast fashion. It's just the buying of cheap mass marketed clothes that you wear like one or two times and then you trash it since the fad was like so last week. In fact, fast fashion has become a booming industry. Popular stores like Zara, Fashion Nova, and the Chinese giant Shein cater to this whiplash type of fashion, right? This year alone, Shein is expected to top $100 billion. All good, right? Not for the planet, because these clothes need to be made so fast and so cheaply, it has become one of the world's worst environmental enemies. You see, it's a three-way hit. First, companies use cheap materials from farms that use pesticides and fertilizers. Second, the factories that churn out those $2 crop tops I can't wear, well, they end up pumping enormous amounts of carbon into the air. And lastly, the materials themselves are, they're all synthetic. So tons and tons of microplastics end up in the ocean and then into our food chain. Shein is actually one of the worst culprits out there, cranking out new clothes like it's butter in 1780. Compared to Zara, which has about 600 new items currently on their site, Shein pumps out 6,000 new items every single day. That's a lot of butter, and it's hell on Mother Nature. The remedy? Make some noise. After hearing complaints from Gen Zers, certain brands are trying to use more sustainable practices. Another alternative, slow fashion. It makes for a happier planet. By making more conscious choices when you go shopping, like picking items that are of higher quality, they will last you a little bit longer. Also, buying and selling used clothing online is a breeze with apps like Poshmark, ThreadUp, or Vinted. These apps can offer used clothes that are reusable, recyclable, and a gazillion percent more eco-friendly. So next time, you have to have those high-waisted, lightly washed, ripped mom jeans that everyone is wearing. Maybe look online for a used pair or even just ask your mom. Now you know.
Tech giants Apple, Google, and Microsoft are teaming up to change the way we log into our accounts. Earlier this month, all three companies announced they were committed to building tools for passwordless sign-in across their platforms. It's based on a standard called FIDO, and it works like this. Users choose an authentication device, in most cases a smartphone. When you log into your account on a computer or tablet, your phone is sent a notification. To unlock your account, all you'll need to do is unlock Lock your phone. It's sort of like current two-factor authentication, where a passcode is sent to your phone, and then you have to enter that passcode on the other devices. But thanks to advances in tech, no passwords are required when using FIDO. You'll just unlock your phone using your face, fingerprint, or whatever method you choose, and you'll be logged in on the other device. It's the best time of the week. It's the best time of the week. You can't start with no melody and then. And not tell us the song right. either. Well, like, it's not a song. That's okay. the problem. <laughs> Get your phones out to scan our QR code so you can shop till you drop with our friends at Morning Save. Check it out. They're going to pick me for the jingle. Mm hmm Steph, what do you have for us today? Hi, Tori, looking gorgeous. And hey, DVL Nation, you. I've got some wonderful products and even better deals just for you. You're going to go wild for this. So first up, we've got Lifestyle Advanced Airstream Elite True Wireless Earbuds with a charging case. Ooh. So deal includes one pair of earbuds with a charging case, super snazzy, and a charging cable. Normally, they're $70. Guess what? We've got them for $19 which saves everyone 73%. All right, now this one, it's L'Oreal Paris Revitalift Anti-Wrinkle Plus Firming Eye and Night Cream Set. Oh, I need this. So the deal includes one cute eye cream yeah. and one night cream. So normally this would be $36, mm. but we've got both of them for $20, well, <gasps> 44%. Now, Tori, you are gonna love this. We've got Heim Vision Sunrise Alarm Clock Wake Up light. So this deal includes one smart alarm clock. Now, who doesn't want to wake up on the right side of the bed every morning? So normally, this is $60, Ugh. but we've got it for only $24, it saves you 60%. And then last, but this is not least, we have got a 10-pack of Lighton 12 LED Outdoor Solar Landscape Spotlight. Oh, nice. So this deal includes 10 spotlights, so you can illuminate your front yard, backyard, or path ways with this 10 pack of solar spotlights and um, normally these are $120 we've got them for 49 Ooh. which saves everyone at home 59% head on over to morningsaves.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices you can even go ahead and scan the QR code on screen or visit morningsave.com thank you so much Steph some really good items. I want to get an email from Colette, who wrote us in about lying. Thank you. She wrote, I was one stop for a speeding ticket and just pretended I knew no English and only spoke French. <laughs> she said, I did not get a ticket. That's great. That's My actually, problem is that I, when I try to do an accent, it goes into some weird we like, patois, say, British, okay. and nobody understands what I'm trying to do. You so do the cop would patois. be like, no. Let me, yeah. let's hear no, I'm bit. not even going to like. Can you say, I'm going to the store to buy some milk? It's like in a British way? Yeah. Or any kind of accent. Okay, I'm yeah. going to this. <laughs> That, no, forget it. it. You I'm going it. to the I'm going to the store to buy some milk. <laughs> I don't know what era that was like the 1600s. That was awful. That was awful. We'll see you tomorrow. That was awful. We love you, Lindsay. Bye, guys. Yeah. 